Welcome to Beyond Synth. Please note, Beyond Synth is an explicit program and may contain inappropriate language. Listener discretion is strongly advised. Hey there, welcome to the show. My name is Andy Last, and you are listening to Beyond Synth. This is episode 41. Is that correct? Sorry, I always hesitate. I get confused because apparently I'm very easily confused. I hope you guys are having a lovely day. I guess it's nighttime now if you're listening to the live broadcast. I say live. Uh, This is Beyond Synth. Beyond Synth on Power 85, 8 p.m. Eastern, and Saturday replay at 1 p.m. Eastern. It's a good time, man. Power 85 is where it's at. Cool music, 24 hours a day, except when it is interrupted for this show. And that is the best time of day. When Beyond Synth is on the air. And I'm going to tell you why. Because it's great. All right? Listen, my name's Andy Last, and I host this show. So that's my name, and the name of the show is Beyond Synth. Please follow me on Twitter. I am at Andy Last. I don't really do too much... uh, tweeting other than just saying hey there's a new show on and maybe the occasional bad joke um but i think the show has been going okay the new format people seem to to like it we've been doing it for several weeks now and i think it's going okay today on the show i have dallas campbell and ogre aka robin ogden and they're both on the show today because they did a collaboration for halloween They've also done some other collaborations. Some of them are secret. So uh, during our chat, you're going to hear us sort of giggling quite a bit about these secret projects. And uh, it's nothing crazy. It's just they did a collaboration and it hasn't been released uh, publicly yet. Now, I I got a chance to uh, absorb that secret project that Dallas and Ogre worked on. And it was a really cool thing. And so I hope that that sees the light of day soon because I think people will will dig it because it was it was really neat. So just so you know, we talk about that secret project for a while, <laughs> so it might be annoying because we never say what it is. But it's a music based, all right. So just imagine that uh, they uh, collaborated on some music together, and it's not hard to imagine that because they did on an album that did get released, which was called All Hallows. Uh, don't forget to follow the podcast on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash beyond.synth.podcast. And uh, yeah, like I said, follow on Twitter at Andy Last and follow Power85 Radio. That is at Power85. And you should also just go to power85.com whenever you want because uh, they play cool music there. And speaking of cool music, let's listen to some cool music right now. This is a track called Rain by an outfit called Color Palette.
And that was Color Palette with the track Rain. And uh, you can uh, head over uh, to the SoundCloud and uh, check it out. Um, like I said, although the, uh, this show airs uh, 8 p.m. Thursday nights, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, the show gets put up on SoundCloud a few days later. And uh, if you're listening to the download link, uh, go to the SoundCloud page and you can check out all the artist links that are featured on the show. So if you uh, have any questions or if you uh, want to know uh, some more about those guys, man, all the links are right there and I suggest you check them out because all the music is awesome. And I'm sure they would love your ears on their work. If you're listening to Power 85, you should also check out Project Friday, which is on Friday nights on Power 85, which has been going for a long time now. And uh, it's hosted by a guy called Steve, and he plays lots of synthwave music too, man. It's uh, pretty much a music-focused show. So if you don't like the sound of my voice, uh, <laughs> and who doesn't, um, his show is uh, just plays lots of really cool tunes. And uh, you will dig that, and that's Friday nights. So check it, man. Did I mention to say follow at Power85 on Twitter? At Power85 Radio on Twitter. And uh, am I forgetting something? SoundCloud? soundcloud.com slash beyond synth also it's so easy to find if you literally just type beyond synth into google the soundcloud is the first thing that comes up so it's not a big deal so feel free to uh to do that you have my permission not that you need it but you have it and if you are an artist who musician who wants to uh hear your music on the show man just send me some links bro or Bruh? What's the what's the girl version of bro? I just realized that. <laughs> what is the girl version of bro? Shit. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, if you want to, sorry, if you want to hear your tracks on the show, uh, just send me a link. You can contact me through the SoundCloud page. You can contact me through Twitter. Uh, you can contact me through the Facebook page. Um, it's all good. And uh, send me some links, and always remember to uh, give me your permission. Uh, I only play tracks on the show with the blessing of the artists. So if you're gonna uh, send me some stuff, just make sure you say that uh, you know that it's cool that I get to play your tracks on the show. And speaking of tracks on the show, here's a track on the show, and this is Saint Samuel with a track called Wavelength 800.
that was Wavelength 800 by Saint Samuel off the uh, album Carousel. Now, Saint Samuel is actually French, so I, I probably am saying that incorrectly. Maybe it's like, uh, no, I don't want to say Sam because that's, that's something else. Good question. I'll ask him how to properly pronounce his name. Probably should have asked him that first before I played the song. But you know the old saying, and he doesn't give a shit. Beyond Synth is on Thursdays at 8pm. Did I say that? <laughs> you know what I was thinking about the other day? You know, like, when they make sequels, and they make cast changes in the sequels? And it's crazy, because even if the sequel's good, I don't know what it is about the suspension of disbelief, but I always find it really hard when they change the cast in sequels of movies. You'd think, like, it'd be easy, like, it's a movie, you understand that it's fake. But, uh, it's crazy how I can never get over that stuff. Even if the person who gets replaced is better, it's still difficult for me. Like, in the case of, uh, Game of Thrones, there was that blonde dude in the third season, and then he got swapped with that new guy who's got sort of, like, the shoulder-length kind of hair and the beard and brown hair and... They literally recast that character as a dude that looked nothing like the other guy. Like, they didn't even try to make him look the same. And the new guy's cooler. And he's, he's a different kind of cool. Like, he's sort of like a more sort of charming character. But uh, I still find it weird. You know, it's, it's hard to accept that, like, that's supposed to be the same guy. My other favorite thing about talking about Game of Thrones is how <laughs> everyone I know, including myself, loves the show and can never remember any character's name. <laughs> like, they're all just that guy and that girl because there's like 80 characters. But that's uh, that's the beauty, man. It's a lot to follow. That's it. But yeah, write me. You know, there's a, there's a thing... There's a thing on this show which is called the mail sack, okay? So if you write me a message, questions, comments, whatever, to the Facebook page or the SoundCloud or whatever, and then just title the message mail sack, as in a sack of mail, all right? Send me anything you want and we'll uh, address it on the show. So if I have a co-host or something, uh, we'll go through the, uh, the mail sack one day and I just compile these things. So have any questions or comments? No criticisms, I don't accept those. But you know, I'll tell you what I do accept. Great music. And here is uh, Corey Valentine with a catchy track called Happen to Me.
that was Happened to Me by Corey Valentine, which is a, it's a fun song, man. I dig, uh, I dig that stuff. Uh, and you do too. That's, <laughs> that's my favorite thing to say. Just sort of aggressively suggest that you like the same thing that I do. I'm trying to think of some other sequel cast changes. Well, of course, Dark Knight, right? Katie Holmes. Switching over Gyllenhaal. And that was a weird one. Because it's, it's tough, right? Because when there's played by a different actress, you, like you lose the, the connection that he had in a weird way. And that's the thing, because I love the movie The Dark Knight. I mean, it is one of the most awesome films. But I do find I'm oddly not very emotional at that character's fate in that film. And I think I would have been more had it been played by the same actress. I think it's literally that simple. Like, my brain is just like, why does he care so much for this lady? He just met her, you know? But uh, maybe that's my failings as an audience member? I don't know. I was watching uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2 because I have a son. And then there was one of the characters was voiced by Mr. T, but then he didn't return to do the voice in the sequel. So then it's done by Terry Crews. And Terry Crews is funny, so like I don't have a problem with that, but it's still another one of those. Even if, even though it was a cartoon and the character was dressed the same, it looked exactly the same, I was just like, wait, there's something, something off here. And why the hell wouldn't Mr. T do a, like a voice gig? It's like the easiest thing in the world. I don't know. I don't know the behind the scenes. I'm not going to pretend to know. But I will say this. We're now going to listen to another track, all right? This is a track called Night Chill by Super Science. This was off the uh, the album Blood, which is sort of Halloween, so if you're wondering why it's sort of a spooky track, uh, that's because uh, Halloween, buddy.
And that was Night Chill by Super Science. So dig that. Cool song. Man, oh man. So what's there? What's left to talk about today? Uh, as I say, I got Dallas uh, Campbell and Ogre, uh, aka Robin Ogden, coming up on the show uh, shortly, and uh, we chat with them. And it was a it was a fun chat. It's actually the first time they ever chatted with each other, even though they've collabed. It's the beauty of the internet. How there's all these people like doing collaborations with each other, and they've never actually had like a an actual conversation. It's all just uh, you know typing and stuff. And there's a lot of people I know that way, and it's interesting. And I like to be the voice. I like to be a voice and interact with people. Like, that's just what I enjoy. That's uh, that's where I get my kicks, you know, having these conversations with people. And I think it's pretty cool because in a lot of times, there are these people who have collaborated with each other, who are, you know, Facebook friends and and help out with each other's music and comment and are fans, and yet they've never heard... You know that artist talk and so that's why i like doing this show because sometimes i'm the i'm the first place wherever people hear these people talk for the first time and go that's what he sounds like a nerd <laughs> i'm just kidding but yeah everybody sounds like nerds you know you know how it is hope you guys enjoyed last week's show i enjoyed that one that was a lot of fun i like having a uh, surprise co-hosts because uh, that one was just completely unplanned. I was uh, recording the show and I just had my playlist ready and I was just gonna talk like this into the mic and I just thought, man, this is dull. Is that, no, that wasn't why. It was because I couldn't think of anything to say. (laughs) I'm rewriting history here. I, I don't even, I don't even remember last week, man. It was so long ago. So like I said, uh, just a, a little reminder there for anyone who cares, if you want your tracks on the show, send them to me, all right? And remember to give me permission to play them. And if you like, give me permission to play you as an artist, too. That helps as well. I just It just makes me feel better. You know, you can say, hey, here's my track, you know, like uh, Laser Jugs. And, you know, I give you permission to play any tracks by Nitro Laser Nut Bag. That's the band name in this joke. So that's the... <laughs> The band name is Nitro Laser Nutbag, and the song was Laser Jugs. Or was it Laser Jug? I'm an idiot. Listen, we're going to listen to some Miami Nights 1984, a quick little track, and uh, and you're going to love it, all right? So this is a Reflex Training by Miami Nights 1984. was Miami Nights 1984 with the track Reflex Training. I think that's on one of the 80s dream compilation tapes. I could be wrong, but I couldn't be wrong. And I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the show. And I think we're just going to go right to uh, my chat with uh, with Dallas Campbell and Ogre. 
So I hope you guys uh, are ready for some cool chats, because that's what's about to happen now. So enjoy yourselves. Here is Dallas and Robin. We're having a very relaxed sort of uh, evening party today, although that's not necessarily when the show is going to air. Well, it airs at 8 p.m., so that's we're only a few hours off. But I'm here with um, two very talented people who have uh, collaborated with each other and who I've spoken with separately on many occasions. So I'm here with uh, Robin Ogden, who is Ogre. Hey. And uh, Dallas Campbell, who is Dallas Campbell. Hey. Hey there. Maybe you should uh, remind everybody which one's which. So, uh, Robin, you say something. Hello. (laughs) And Dallas, you say something. How's it going? All right, man, it's going good. So, uh, just so everybody knows, this is a very late night. Dallas is tired. He's been having lots of wine. Robin Robin is is very very tired because the time difference. So, it's like (laughs) three in the morning where he is. And uh, he's just come back from an evening at the pub. I have a bunch of pizza and poutine in front of me (laughs) and a can of pop. I should be drinking water because you're supposed to stay hydrated for your voice like on the on the radio. But if it been pop is technically like dehydrating and then I'll end up with that NPR voice where my mouth is going to make lots of noises and stuff. And is that poutine salty? Yeah, it is, man. That poutine is salty, and there's <laughs> cheese and gravy, and it's like really low-budget poutine, so it's actually not very good. But I was taught as a child that if I don't eat this, some people are starving in another country who are going to be very upset that they are not getting the stomach cramps I'm going to get from eating this poutine, so I have to eat it all. <laughs> you better eat that poutine. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, you better. I kind of want to try it, but... Well... <laughs> I shouldn't eat into the mic. I don't know why I just did that. (laughs) There should be a setting on the fucking channel strip that you just turn down, like just food noise. It just says food on it. and (laughs) It'd be a useful thing for me right now. Um, All right, so I'm here with the both of you because you just a few weeks ago, we're going to pretend because it's a few weeks from now. Yeah. Um, (laughs) A few weeks ago, you 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 guys did a collaboration which was cool. It was a Halloween thing. You guys have also done some other secret projects we're not going to talk about. Um, I'm just I'm just sort of setting the stage for the fact that you guys... This may not be your first collaboration. Yeah. Maybe it is. Well, maybe, maybe it, it is. isn't. <laughs> <laughs> you guys both have this cool sound, and uh, I'm happy that you guys have sort of found this sort of creative kind of partnership thing. I think it's pretty cool. And the other thing that's really cool is that you guys have done these projects and this is actually the first time you two have ever spoken to each other, right? Yep, correct. (laughs) Pretty cool. Yeah, man, listen to that chemistry. (laughs) (laughs) Dallas will never speak to me again after this. (laughs) And that'll be it. (laughs) He'll be like, this guy. No, 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 it's really cool. It's really cool. Yeah. How did it begin? Like, who who reached out to whom? Well, no, Dallas hit me up a while ago. Like, a long while ago. You you just, like... I think you added me on Facebook and you dropped me a line about Origin Seeds. And I thought it was really, really cool. That could be. Well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and then a bit of time passed. Probably, like, a year. And then... Basically, I remember reaching out... Oh no, that was it. I'd done 195 and Neon Vice, I remember, I think it was an interview of them. It was Lucy Black. And uh, I was chatting to her and she was like, who would you like to do a collab with? And I was like, well, this Dallas Campbell, he's he's the man as far as I'm concerned when it comes to all things music and synthesis. I'd like to, like to make some music with him. And then I remember we got in touch and we tried a track. And I'm pretty sure I messed it up. <laughs> quite, quite. No, quite it was we. Uh, it was like three. It was some three people. It was me, you, and somebody else. It was Jake? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Protect one hundred and one. But I don't know how. I don't remember I, what how we got into the. I guess we just moved on from there. I don't remember what happened after that. I got in touch with you about doing a uh, chat for synthetics about. Oh yeah. Basically, just about. Production, production. Your memory is far better than Thanks. mine. I've got. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've, I've been. Uh, I've been writing the uh, 
I don't even know what you'd call. What do you call an autobiography that's not an autobiography that's for more than one person? Just a biography, probably. A journal. That's just a journal, isn't it? My um, wife's uh, grandma used to keep a daily log of like <laughs> of every awesome. day, and so there literally there's these books that are um, that are these this stack of books, and every day there's like a few point form notes about what happened that day, but it goes back like decades. Wow. Were there insights or was it just a list of things that happened during the day? Yeah, I don't think they were, there was no, I don't think there was any like emotional attachment put to them. It was more just like, yeah. you know, Johnny visited today. Just uh, what went on. Yeah. So-and-so's dead, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> there was no emotional attachment to that entry? <laughs> <laughs> Dallas, when I first met you, it was sort of like a similar thing. Like we just sort of, we must have been like Facebook friends for some reason. And then, and then you just shot me a message with Origin Seeds. Like I think the same way. Cause I remember going like, oh cool. Cause like you sent me, yeah, you sent me the yeah, album yeah, I remember. and you're like, Hey, I'm just sending this to my pals. I'm like, oh cool, man. And then I was like, oh wow. Like, cause I really dug it. In fact, I, I, I played some Dallas Campbell tracks a few weeks ago. Hey, Ooh. thanks. I think I mentioned this to you in a conversation a while ago, but whenever I put my synthwave playlist on random, <laughs> yeah. Dallas Campbell always comes up. And like that playlist has maybe like two or three days worth of music. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't matter if it's like a one hour sitting, like all of a sudden I will hear Dallas Campbell popping up. And what I like is, I mean, of all the people sort of in the scene in the synth, you know, doing the synth music and stuff like uh, Dallas, your sound is like the most distinct because I think literally no one is doing that. That's sort of the the spacey, like late 70s synth stuff, like like with the, the kind of funk, like like no one does that sound. Thanks. I don't know what it is. I just, yeah, whatever. I just do it. <laughs> you, I don't know what it is. You, you can't fight what comes out of you, you know? Like, that's... that's. Yeah, if you try, it usually ends up no good. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. just gotta let it flop right out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Freely. Well, there's, there's no way that can be misinterpreted. So the... Because um, there's a lot of artists now... I mean, I, I love the synthwave sound, but there's a lot of them where, like, a track will come on I just won't know. You know, like, I'll have to go to the playlist and go, like, oh, who is this? I, I'm, always, mm -hmm. I'm always concerned that someone's going to challenge me on my knowledge. I've never I've never professed to be, like, an expert in it. Like, I feel like that would be more like a, a Marco Merrick or a uh, Rick Thorpe, right. you know, who might be able to, like, say, hey, I know who that track is. Like, I can't, like, unless, yeah. I'm, unless I've memorized the music. And uh, Dallas, it's like... I can be hearing the album or the tracks for the first time, and I'm just like, okay, well, that's that's Dallas. Like, that's that's totally Dallas. It's all the out of tune. <laughs> 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 well, we're gonna jump back and forth and talk uh, about some of the stuff that you guys separately have released since I spoke with you last, and then we'll sort of merge and then talk about the um, collaboration and stuff. So, Ogre. Yes. <laughs> which I guess I'll call Robin. I, I always find yeah. it weird when I'm talking to you, like, what I want to call you. Well, I, yeah, 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 I don't even know, like, myself, as we've spoken about before. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I always find it weird because I know, you know, through doing the podcast, and since there's there's people who I chat with on a regular basis, and so I always have this feeling like, oh, we're up to date and we're current, and then I remember like, oh shit, like they haven't been on the podcast in years. Uh, like the same thing happened with like uh, Mike Mendoza and Hoo-Ha. Like I chat with him every, like pretty much every day, and I realize like, oh crap, like he was on the second episode of the show and really like never came back in any meaningful way. Yeah. And then the same with like uh, with you, Robin. Um, I feel like I bring your music up like in every episode there's some sort of mention of it and uh, then i realized like oh shit but even you haven't been on for a while <laughs> so talk to me about 195 because when i talked to you last which was years ago for like the, the full interview back when i didn't even know what the format of the show was yeah so i only played i played two of your songs in a one hour conversation i probably should have played like 10 so that was when 194 <laughs> 194 was out calico braun was out and yeah. since then, uh, you've got 195, which is awesome. Well, let's talk about the track, Don't Call Me Hero. Oh man, what can, what can I remember about this track? So it's been a year now, pretty much. I think I released it the 16th of November last year, 2014. Uh, Don't Call Me Hero, Christ, let's have a think. I remember being very drunk when I wrote the melody of that. 
I remember going to a pub quiz and coming back quite late at night. Did you win? No, we came second. (laughs) And there were some very niche James Bond questions, if I remember rightly. In fact, it was to about who wrote the theme to From Russia With Love, which I thought was a guy called Matt Munro. It turned out he just sung it. Anyway, it might have been some Andy Last <laughs> trivia that we might have been able to, to get by on. Uh, I, feel, we, I feel like the only James Bond trivia that everyone seems to think is like the clever thing to ask. Yeah. Is there always just like, who, what's all the names of all the people who have ever played James Bond? <laughs> and, then when, and then whenever you do the list, there's always that asshole that's like, well, actually, so-and-so played him in a radio play in 1967. You're like, fuck you. Like, that guy doesn't count. Peter Sellers uh, doesn't count or whatever. Like, there's that comedy one. Yeah. I have this thing with trivia because people will always post those links. Sorry to interrupt your story, but the... Oh, no, it's, it's fine. You know, be like, 10 things about Star Wars you never knew. <laughs> and it's like 10 things everybody's always known. And the same with, like, Back to the Future and stuff. Like, it's all, like, the same kind of... Tr- one one of them literally was things about Back to the Future you've never noticed. And then one of them <laughs> was, hey, when he goes back to the future, it's called the Lone Pine Mall instead of the Twin Pine Mall because he ran over that tree in the past. Uh, I'm, yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, dude, the whole point of that shot is a really obvious look. The sign is different. <laughs> like, I mean, like that's the point of that sequence. It's not trivia. That's it's so it's like having trivia like Darth Vader reveals that he's Luke's dad. <laughs> Wah wah trivia like fuck this you. trivia for idiots. Yeah, it's so stupid. Oh, people my. always, I, I I just have a thing with the stuff that people post. So, uh, okay, so we're talking about one nine five. How about this? I'll make it easy on. It. Let's just listen to "Don't Call Me a Hero" now because this song is kick ass, <laughs> and then we'll be back with uh, with Robin and Dallas. That was "Don't Call Me Hero" by Ogre, and I'm back with uh, with Ogre, Robin, and uh, and Dallas Campbell. I love that track. Yeah, it's a cool song, man. Uh, thanks. Yeah, when I hear that, I definitely can feel like the the, the N64 controller <laughs> in my hand and like playing Bond in college, <laughs> Goldeneye. It it just has that sound. It's 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 awesome. I have the biggest smile <laughs> right now. <laughs> 
back in the beginning of the year, when I had that weird epiphany that I was going to make the next GoldenEye, mm. which I've yeah. since abandoned, but uh, man, I was super uh, passionate about it. Make it. I was passionate, <laughs> man, but it... it uh, once I played GoldenEye X, it sort of, the thing faded away. But um, yeah, that was the track I used in my demo trailer. I was, I was trying to learn like 3D animation. Like what a weird phase. Like that was a quick phase of my life where I thought hey, I was going to design a fucking multiplayer video game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a designer and I'm not an animator, but I thought I could do it. I remember us having some pretty lengthy lengthy combos everything i said i meant oh no i know i completely know that it's just uh i just remember us talking about all sorts it was a i mean it's a great idea yeah because i because yeah. dallas you were in on it as well because i just i i just had this thing and i think um i talked to uh damon hatfield of ign who was on the show a few weeks ago and i, I went on my golden eye rant Basically, I just had this thing where I just feel that I want a company to bring back the multiplayer shooter that um, has like that party game feeling, yeah, which yeah. is what GoldenEye and Perfect Dark had. So I've already been through that whole right, but that's that's where my brain was, and I just really want that again, like some you know, like a shooter that's got a, a pick up and play ease that like a whole bunch of people can like throw on controllers, and you're not bogged down for hours in like stupid menus and stuff. You just jump in and play, and it's. And it's easy to play, but it's fun for everyone. You know, like, so yeah, that, I really wanted to make that game. And this track, I was listening to 195, and it was sort of inspiring me during that whole uh, creative process. Uh, it's so cool to hear. I think I got my N64 out after when I first, when this came out, and I played Bond. Because it, <laughs> it just made me want to play it. <laughs> and I think that I had, I think that I listened to it while I played it. But I was terrible. I was so bad at it. Did you actually play an N64 or were you playing an emulator? Oh, a real deal. The real one. Yeah. The <laughs> oh, man. I'm very jealous. Mine died. The motherboard just gave out. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's It was really sad. I was clearing <laughs> out my stuff from my parents like a couple of years ago. I found the N64 and I was like, oh, man, I'm so psyched. I've got all of these games. I just want to play Perfect Dark, GoldenEye. And uh, my lady partner was super pumped to play Pokemon Snap for the first part. And uh, it was dead. The motherboard had completely, completely gone. So that's it. I rescued the expansion pack from it. And that was about all I could do. It was very sad. But <laughs> yeah, I'll always have the memories. I'll always <laughs> have the memories. I don't think I've ever had as much fun as having like, you know, a group of friends around or whatever, having a couple of beers and like, oh my, play. yeah playing GoldenEye or even like, you know, Mario Party or any of those sort of things. So um. Yeah, the, the high point of that, the 64, was right when I was in undergrad in college. So it was the daily <laughs> get around the 64 and yelling and punching <laughs> each other and, you know, puking <laughs> beer everywhere. That was, <laughs> that was like a daily event. Bond and Turok. Turok 2, maybe? Yeah, Turok 2 had multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that multiplayer and, the, and Bond mainly. I remember, like, I wanted to like the multiplayer, but it, it never had the charm that uh, Goldeneye had for it me. It didn't. Yeah. It, no. I got really good. There was, you started with just the crossbow, which was just, you know, like the pea shooter, mm -hmm. but you could still kill somebody with a headshot. So I just got really good at using that. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and I would just sit in the corner and, you know, try to shoot people in the head, which was, it was fun. No. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway yeah well, well i kept fooling with different emulators i mean i still have a working n64 but i found some emulators that pr you know purport to be able to play games with 60 frames a second and i found this emulation called goldeneye x yeah and that was the thing where they took the perfect dark engine and they put all the goldeneye assets into it and it's super cool, but I just couldn't get an emulator to work it correctly because I was literally going to buy like a gaming laptop just, oh, yeah. just to run GoldenEye so I could like play it on the projector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember you saying. Because it, it worked pretty well. Like, And with the right emulator, you can plug a PlayStation controller in and then you can actually configure the sensitivity of the analog sticks and all that stuff. So you can actually effectively really use a PlayStation 4 controller and play Goldeneye and it actually feels okay. Yeah. That's sweet. With a lot of tweaking. And so I found an emulator that I could sort of play the single player with a sort of a smooth frame rate. But then once I tried to do multiplayer, it just... Was it like a local multiplayer or was it online? 
Oh no, it was local. It was the same thing. Like it oh, was yeah, just yeah. it was a uh, but it was like the original Perfect Dark, so not the one that they did on the on the Xbox 360. So I feel like when I did split screen, then I started to notice the game would like dip and go into slow motion even though it said it was supposed to be running at like 60 frames a second. Yeah. And unfortunately, the whole reason I wanted it was to do four player split screen. Like that was the function. Yeah. But uh, anyway, that's a that's a fucking story for another day, man. Hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Cause you always got the slowdowns yeah. <laughs> when you set off like a hundred uh, hundred time mines. Oh yeah, proximity mines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the proximity mines, and then in Perfect Dark, you could have bots. And so if you turned on eight bots, yeah, the game it- was a slideshow. Like it actually literally was uh, at times like one frame every three seconds or something. <laughs> like it was, yeah. But yet uh, somehow I managed to navigate it. You know, you'd start to learn and your brain would adapt. But uh, <laughs> anyways, man, Dallas, man. Yeah. Since, uh, yes. <laughs> do people do people call you that, Dallas man? I think I do. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of people say that to me. Actually, I just thought that sounds pretty cool because it sounds like talisman. Hey, yeah. Like fucking. <laughs> hey, my magic Dallas man. <laughs> anyway, that's probably racist. Um, so you since uh, since I talked to you, you had a bunch of things that you put out. Did I? Yeah. You, yes, you did. <laughs> this, this is like this is your life, and then <laughs> and I've got a special guest here right now. Is, um, wow. So. <laughs> Let's uh, talk to me a bit about you did the you had a thing called the protostellar phase and then you came up with the extended edition and uh, there's a track on there that I really dig called open the gates mm. which was kind of a more like sort of energized track you you always dig so deep <laughs> <laughs> you do your homework and then I'm like oh man well how about yeah, this? Well, I know I know what you're talking about well how about this let's uh, let's listen to it. And then, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll talk a bit about that, or you can just talk about the album too, in general, if uh, if you've had a lot of wine. <laughs> this is the <laughs> this is so this is uh, "Open the Gates" by Dallas Campbell.
And that was Open the Gates by Dallas Campbell. And I'm still with uh, Robin and Dallas. So Dallas, tell me about about that thing. About that thing? Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> that thing, I'm thinking that was, that was from... That's been a few years ago, at least. That was when I... I think I had just gotten an analog sequencer. I had written that for it. It was actually a video. My friend and I, he, he, we used to make some videos, and we, I, sh- I wrote that just for a, a little video we made one weekend. But that album, the ex- that extended edition, I just had like a few songs that I hadn't done anything with from that time period. So I thought, oh, I'll just stick it on here. Maybe, maybe somebody will want it. Was that Jeff with the video? Have you ever seen all that, all those videos? <laughs> <laughs> We, we, yeah, we just we used to make goofy videos on the weekends. My favorite is that meeting one. Yeah, that was that was probably that was one of the first and probably the best. Meeting, we're in a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff, that was fun doing that stuff. You don't do them anymore. Well, we're actually working on something now, but it's it's just like you know synthesizer and like trippy graphic. He it, he does some sort of animation like cool stuff and he's gonna do something with that and I'll do some kind of trippy stuff beeps and boops <laughs> awesome <laughs> awesome you're selling this to me man <laughs> no I'm sure it'll be cool Dallas is uh, he's you're so much more profound than I am when it comes to this stuff well I think it says uh, cause it's Dallas good. just sort of he sits back and just says cool things and hey you're a cool guy Dallas <laughs> sure is sure is I have I have terrible attention problems so I'm usually drifting off like uh, <laughs> uh, should I make coffee that's <laughs> when do I have any coffee near me that I can reach that's usually what I'm thinking about like <laughs> do I have any coffee near me <laughs> <laughs> but at this point in time, will that be a, a weird mix of stuff? Have you just been eating uh, cheese and wine all night? No. I, I drink coffee from the time I step out of bed. I am drinking coffee till the time I pass out. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you, you just have this, like, such a chill vibe about you, though. That's it. Like, if, uh, dude, if I had... Because I, I cut out caffeine, or at least I, yeah. I greatly decreased it because it just makes me anxious as hell. Oh, man, yeah. I would just turn to stone if I didn't drink coffee. I would <laughs> so, slow down that much that my all of my molecules... Well, yeah, I might just turn into a black hole. <laughs> just I've, collapse uh, upon myself. <laughs> I've given it up twice now. Both times have been disastrous. I'm now at the point where I will do it occasionally, but since I've I've cut back on caffeine so much that I really do feel like th- that it's like a drug now. Like I, cause, cause now it, yeah, really, yeah. it really affects me as if I were taking any other drug and wanted uh, a reaction like, Oh, I'm going to take these pills and then I'm going to be awake all night or whatever. And <laughs> now, now I literally like that happens to me with caffeine. Like I'll go to a Canadian coffee chain, Tim Hortons, and I'll buy myself a, um, they got this thing called a French vanilla. Yeah. And it's like, it's meant to be like, I think it's supposed to be a, a, not a cappuccino. Oh yeah, no, yeah, it's got the word cappuccino in it, but it doesn't taste like coffee at all. It basically just tastes like sort of a, a creamy, like hot chocolate with a bit of sort of vanilla yeast light coffee taste, but very, very mild because I can't really do coffee. It's like too, I don't like the taste of it. So it's like basically drinking chocolate milk. And it's super artificial tasting. It's just a weird powder that they dissolve. If I drink one of those now, I will be I'll be awake for a day. Like it will actually like power me for a day. Wow. In the that's afternoon. Pretty good. That's cost yeah. effective use of coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know? that's like, pretty good. But then if if I receive any bad news during that day, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, yeah. Because that's when, like, because it's great. It'll, it'll, I'll focus on work and all that stuff. But then if someone co- phones me and goes, you know, it's just like, oh, Andy, Andy, you know, like, oh, there's trouble or whatever. Then I'll just be like, I'll just have a heart attack and fall over, and then <laughs> they're just gonna tell me that like a raccoon uh, went through their garbage or something. Then I'll be on the floor <laughs> like shaking. Yeah, <laughs> I think caffeine brings on quite a lot of anxiety. I just never put it together. You know what I mean? Like diet is uh i know people always say that you know it's not you know but diet is so important and oftentimes there's things going on 
and uh, you never attribute it to what you ate. Yeah. And so I would have these moments in the afternoon where I'd just be like, ah, you know, I just don't, I feel kind of uneasy, and I never, I never really put two and two together until I was like, oh shit, it, it just so happens that I feel this way a half an hour every time I fucking <laughs> have a cup of tea. Like, what's up with that? <laughs> but then, if it doesn't affect people that way, then it's then it's fine, right? Like, if you can do it. And it's cool, and it's you know, it's it, for me, my the logic part of my brain stops me from like it's just a regular routine to eat shitty food and then like <laughs> drink some Pepto Bismol or something. And to me, it's like if I eat shitty food and the same food consistently hurts me, yeah, then there's a point where I just have to stop because I'm just like, dude, like it's not worth it. Like it just every time I eat this, you know, like I feel like knives in my belly or whatever. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that man because no one wants knives in their belly no, uh, no. I don't no I man. know that I don't hey Robin yeah <laughs> let's listen to the track uh, Negotiations Over off 195 okay <laughs> That was Negotiations Over by Ogre. And uh, I'm still here with uh, Dallas and Robin. So, Robin, tell me about that track, because that one's cool. That's very kind of you to say. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty articulate. <laughs> uh, that one was actually one of the ones I did towards the end of, like, it wasn't an afterthought, but it was something that wasn't quite working within the context of the album originally and then I think I'm just looking at my rack now like basically most of it is the Korg M3R rack synthesizer which is like half a Korg M1 very nice that basically solved solved all of the problems <laughs> with that track that track's in my running lit playlist oh wow that's uh that's that's pretty cool to hear. I run to that track every <laughs> other day, I think. It was like a weird one because I remember I couldn't get it to work within the, the context of everything else being sort of soundtracky. That one's a bit more sort of up-tempo-y, a little bit more dancey, maybe. What I said to you when I heard it, because um, on the album 195, you have a track called End Titles. Yeah. But to me, these are the end titles. 
it gives me that sort of that like Blade Runner vibe, you know, like at the end of Blade Runner, the track that plays. Yeah. Because the rest of 195 is so like soundtracky and you've got these great songs that are like Commando and stuff. Like you, you had a lot of really <laughs> cool sounds in it. <laughs> And so when this track played, I just felt that since it felt more like a song, yeah, it just seemed super appropriate that it would be like the the credits music. I mean, it maybe it would have been more fitting as an end credit sort of thing because it was, yeah, it was less less soundtrack and more songy, mm-hmm. and a bit bit more of a banger, I guess. It was also pretty complicated. I remember like I try not to have that many things going on at once, but that one I remember it was it was a bit of a mix down mix down hell scenario trying to get everything to sit right and it must be even like super crazy with that fucking computer of yours <laughs> <laughs> don't jinx it it's doing it hopefully yeah. <laughs> hopefully it's still doing its job that's what dallas and i were talking about when you were like fiddling with it before we started recording was just how how is it that you make like the music you make with a computer that seems to be that uh, near death <laughs> oh man yeah i really need a new one i really do <laughs> and my lady partner keeps telling me to buy a new computer before it's too late and I lose everything. <laughs> quit, <laughs> quit buying so many cents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been pretty good recently, though. I mean... Are you running Windows 98 on that thing? What are you running? <laughs> oh, 98 might be more stable. This is uh, 7. 7. Oh, okay, Windows okay. 7. So I think that is one of the good ones because I go every other, every other OS, don't know, with Windows. Like, Vista was rubbish. I understand 8 was lackluster, so the next one, maybe that's out already, I don't know, should be good. Yeah, 10, because you get a free upgrade. I don't know, like, I use a Mac, but my wife has a PC, <laughs> and it's crazy, we get along! But, uh, <laughs> the- <laughs> but he's running, my lady partner, she's running a Mac, she's all, all about the Mac. I feel like this is classier, I should call my wife my lady partner. It's always lady partner, it's lady partner classy. friend. She's laughing in the corner of the room. <laughs> Usually I just call my wife woman. I just yell at her and say, woman! <laughs> yeah, lady partner. It's a... Uh, <laughs> suits all scenarios. Yeah, no, it's pretty good. <laughs> she just calls me Robin. That's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to change gears here. We're going to focus on Dallas now. Yeah. You also came out with this other album. It was called Oasis. I did. I did a, a little promo for it on the show. This is how I connect myself to all of your hard work. (laughs) I say, you did a thing. Now listen to me talk for three minutes and then, uh, you know. It's cool, man. (laughs) It's a, it's a brilliant album. Oh, you stop it with all that. No, you know, you know what I think of that album. That's a great album. You did a review, right? I sure did. All right, then here, let's, let's make this show dynamic. I had a song that I had picked out. Why don't you remember what you wrote? I will even let you pause oh, to man, that's reread a, what you wrote. That's that, a tough one there. That is a tough one. Because I didn't do a track by track sort oh, of Or did you review. do like how it made you feel inside? I guess I kind of <laughs> did. I guess I kind of did. I definitely dealt with the opening and the ending quite heavily. But also just kind of like how important I thought it was as an album. But he probably talked about Pillars. I did. I did talk about Pillars. Pillars was the one I was going to bring up. That's the one I was yeah, going to mention. He talked about Pillars, I'm pretty sure. Then that fucking works perfect. <laughs> can we can we play it? <laughs> so let's uh, let's listen to the track Pillars off the album Oasis by Dallas Campbell.
And that was uh, Pillars by Dallas Campbell. And uh, I'm joined here with Dallas and Robin. And uh, yeah, so we were just talking about that. Robin wrote this lovely review of your album. That was very kind of him. Well, it was was a hell of an album. Maybe I can uh, dig it up here. Dallas Campbell's Oasis in the Desert of the Real. That's the the one. (laughs) That's that's gotta be it. I love the way Robin writes. Do you mind if I read? (laughs) <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, read it. This is what Robin wrote about Dallas's album. I'll just read the first paragraph. I often find myself considering the role of authenticity in retro electronic music, and indeed music and art moreover. Without wishing to engage with the ins and outs of overplayed hardware software rhetoric and oft-quoted ideas of representation and simul... I can't even say that word. What? Sim- simulacra? I think it's simulacra, if <laughs> simulacra? I remember right. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to stop. Uh, <laughs> I firmly believe in the relevance of vintage synthesizers and have the utmost admiration for musicians who practice authentic production mythologies. Dallas Campbell is certainly one of the latter, a producer paving his own way down the road less traveled building cosmic musical pagodas, like last year's full-length Origin Seeds, and teaching old synthesizers new tricks on the way. <laughs> so how do you feel about that, Dallas? Is that Was that flattering? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. Very nice, though. Thank you. But... <laughs> No, I love I love the way Robin writes because you like um, your use of language. Like when I, I wrote a review of one nine five, 
on synthetics, and it reads like a child compared to the way you write know, about, yeah. about fucking. Oh uh, man, I <laughs> yeah, he writes that stuff, and I'm just and he sends me a track. I'm like, dude, it's good, man. And then he, <laughs> <laughs> and then, I've got to yeah, put that. Writes. I've got to put that English English masters to you some way, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, years of education, a voice. Yeah. Would be, uh... <laughs> right. So, oh, yes, you've got uh, pillars here. You say, um, pillars surrounds you, enveloping your ears in lush analog polyphony. The cerebral complexity of the evolving arpeggiated sequences and the live leads are firmly grounded in an ever-present rock-solid classic boogie groove. <laughs> the groove is a core character of this album established early on and will be your companion for its duration. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> but, uh, Very yeah. nice. You were on a roll that, that day. <laughs> <laughs> I love that album. That was the... Thank you. That was the magic. Thank you about that. It's a great album. Can you um, talk to me about Pillars in a way that matches the language of what Robin said about it? No, n- not at all. But <laughs> I mean, I don't think I could. I can person. bumble around a few <laughs> words about it, but <laughs> a lot of the boogie he talks about comes from the. I was using a lot of drum uh, preset drum machines at the time, and they all kind of have a little bit of a swing kind of. Bo- different kind of boogie feel so a lot of that kind of translated to the album you know you sure love them <laughs> drummers though they're great yeah they all have a little certain swing to them that little character yeah they got a charm for sure like it's really cool i need to st- i still need to send you the uh patterns off that organ i got oh yes yeah, yeah, yeah. I still, haven't, I still haven't sampled them, but I found that I can kind of slight. If I push the tempo thing all the way down, you can basically sample the individual hits. Yes. Yeah. Good idea. I'll hook you. I'll hook <laughs> you up. <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's a job for the weekend. Not to, not to get too advanced, but compare and contrast your two uh, production styles. That's a fucking big question, but like that uh, is a. <laughs> Mega and you've got question. two minutes. Well, because people, you know, I, I get people who, who message me about the show, and sometimes they want to hear a show that's more technical, and, and I keep promising that I'm going to do one one of these days. And I did say that if I did, I was going to have you two on for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because, um, because I wanted to get people that had different uh, production techniques, you know? And so, like, Dallas, you're doing, like, you've got that room full of, like, 50 keyboards or however the hell many you have <laughs> and you're big into sort of the, the you know the collection of old gear and stuff like that then I wanted to have someone on who b- because I think sometimes people feel like it's lesser like because I talked to somebody else and I mentioned the idea and they were like oh but I only use I, I do it all in computer all right and I'm like well, I'm like, well that's val- valid too you know what I mean like they're all different well, of course yeah, uh, yeah all of it and what yeah, I wanted yeah. to do is really get all the different things and then what i love about uh, robin is just that he will um do field recordings for noises and stuff oh uh, yeah he's that, great with that and, and, uh, yeah, i yeah. made uh, i made dallas a load of tape loops and uh posted them over yeah, he, <laughs> he he hand you know hand made the hand cut the tape made a tape loop for me to to use in my four track nice He's great for the sampling. I do love the sampling. At all times, he's always sampling something. Yeah, it is a massive question, though. Like, we both have different musical voices, I guess. I mean, like, it's probably easiest if we talk about this in terms of, like, what we've been working on together, I imagine. I think we maybe have become more similar the more we've worked together. Less in terms of, like, the notes we write, but, like, I would have said, even before we started collaborating, like, I've... I mean, I was using less analog stuff just sort of digital crappy uh rumpler rack stuff from from the 80s and then i got this monopoly last year which basically changed changed everything <laughs> you won that though didn't you wasn't that part of it yeah i was given it by craig connor who was the director of audio at rockstar games Ooh. and he did all of the music to the manhunt games and the early grand theft auto games and he was basically in charge of all of the sound for all of the later grand theft auto games up to grand theft auto 5 so but like i've got to know him and he's a really cool guy like i hung out and got pretty drunk with him back in june july or something and he's a really cool cool dude but yeah i don't know like we we're on the same page i think 
in Dallas and I, I would have said, in terms of what we're up to. Oh, yeah. Well, I think uh, you guys are big on the, like, live recording in real synths and stuff. Oh, yeah. As opposed to, you know... Uh, doing them in the computer and also um i see lots of videos where you guys will post and you dallas too like where you're like sort of fiddling with like you know big weird old equipment and stuff and right, doing, like right doing weird experiments with them and things like that oh uh, yeah, yeah that's that, one, that's if, dallas if were, uh, <laughs> that's that's the old dallas man pretty much like, if there was ever a painting or a picture of me it would be just sitting there like turning one knob <laughs> <laughs> That's what I enjoy. <laughs> yeah. And then there was this thing you collaborated on that's still a secret, uh, you two, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I just say that because when you guys did that project and I was lucky enough to uh, to sort of see it or hear it, I should say. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> wink. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But... Um, what I noticed of that thing was really interesting because I knew Dallas's style uh, going into it, and I thought, well, this is totally appropriate. I, again, I hate I hate talking like I'm sorry, audience, but I have to be vague. But um, this, the the whole the project was I was like, okay, this is totally up Dallas's alley. And then Robin, then you started doing music for this thing too, and then I noticed your two styles just sort of merged on that project uh -huh. because there was there was moments where I was like, okay, I didn't know who was doing what and i didn't want to say because i was either going to feel stupid or insult somebody <laughs> that, um, that definitely <laughs> happened yeah yeah <laughs> we really sort of went back and forth on that quite a lot and it was great like it was a, it was a cool thing and obviously that continues on on to this but I, but i noticed that since then and i don't know if this is true robin but like what i've seen from you you have been experimenting more lately with doing like kind of live recordings, especially with obviously the Gradients EP or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Let's listen to the song, which is uh, which is my favorite one off Gradients, which is called B One. Oh <laughs> so yeah. Let's, uh, so let's let's listen to B One. Listen to it twice, and then we'll uh, come back. Yeah. Just <laughs> <We'll> play it <laughs> twice in a row.
right, and that was B1 by uh, Ogre off the album Gradients. And so we were talking just before that about how, you know, the technique of doing this, and you recorded this one all sort of live. Yeah. And, and was that sort of inspired by the project that you guys were working on, or was that just something else, or did you get the idea while you were doing it? Or? Oh, man, I don't even... I don't know where the idea came from, particularly, but... It was definitely inspired by what Dallas and I had been up to previously. Like, without a doubt, that was probably one of the biggest sort of influences on that whole thing. And Dallas himself, like, man, that, you know, just like the whole methodology that we'd, we'd taken with the secret project. <laughs> <laughs> which it, which we had for, like, we're not, we're not, we're not, not supposed to talk about, but... I just really dig the idea of playing music, you know? Like, a lot of the stuff that we've done together and stuff I've done, like, even with work and whatever, recently has all been, you know, you just jam it and see what happens. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> Words to live by. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, it's all about, or for me, a lot of the time, like, serendipity and happy accidents, you know? Like, you never quite know where it's going to go. Uh, and sometimes it'll be bad, and sometimes it'll be really cool, or at least, <laughs> at least I think so. <laughs> what I liked about uh, Gradients was just because, since uh, th- I mean, there was a few moments on there where you even hear like some sort of some like real tape wobble and like a, like tape yeah, glitch and stuff, so. which maybe <laughs> bothers you, but but I remember thinking like, oh, that was cool, like because it felt real, <laughs> like it was a real moment. So yeah, I, I love that. That that album is one of my favorites. That's a day I listen to that one every day. Oh, it's very kind, man. Like that that tape vibe. That is, it's from 1974. It's a Type Four metal cassette that I have had for a couple of years now, and I've been saving it <laughs> for for a special occasion. <laughs> and it it became the master cassette copy of of the album. And it took like, I mean, that, I didn't realize how badly demagged and uh, stuff that tape was until I listened back to like the actual take that I was happy with because it took about not gonna lie it took like six takes probably to get it to get it right and like a week of rehearsing over sequences and stuff I don't think it took you that long well I don't know (laughs) we were working on other stuff and you're like hey I recorded these songs (laughs) I was like dude when the heck did you do this (laughs) (laughs) it took a little while like but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And that's the sort of stuff I want to do live, if I ever get to play live, I think. I just dig all that whole, like, idea that things aren't necessarily 100% rehearsed, but, you know, there's, a, there's room for error. But that error might be good, if uh, <laughs> if yeah, you well, get what I'm saying, you know. It's exciting, man. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. You, f- you feel the energy and the, the heart that goes into it. I think that's what... That's the tricky thing about, because there's a lot of music that I know, you know, is made 100% in the computer and it's cool, but sometimes it can be slightly sterile, you know, like when mm-hmm. it's, when everything's perfectly, you know, hitting on the stuff and even when you're using like a, like a sequencer or something, but it's like a real one. Yeah. There's still, I don't know, there's just something that's, it, this, it, it's slightly imperfect, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, there's definitely a few bum notes and gradients. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And it's hard to, it's hard to, I don't know why that is, but I think it's the same thing, the same reason that I love, you know, practical effects over digital. It's like, it's hard to, it's hard to qualify really, but it, it, it's like you feel the work, you feel the real work. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. even though, you know, I, I can't dismiss that, you know, CGI takes a lot of, a lot of work from like hundreds of people. Um, yeah. who, you know, work a long time. But there's something about just when something's real and that even when the effect is flawed, if it's real, it's still stronger to me because mm-hmm. I, because I, 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 but it's hard. I can't, I can't explain it. Like someone could argue with me the opposite and go like, but you know, each CGI takes like 50 guys, like, you know, like 200 hours of, you know, like in 10 months of work to do. And, and I'll be like, yeah, but then there's like a big rubber Arnold head in Terminator 1 and for some reason I'm I'd like it even if it, it gives, is cheap looking it gives it a human touch yeah I think it's the same the same reason why I like being able to see the thumbprints on like claymation yeah yeah no I know what you mean yeah. like 
literally a human touch. Yeah. I guess that'll sort of bring us up to speed to uh, a collaboration you guys did that we can talk about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, which was your Halloween release called uh, All Hallows. Mm, yes. And uh, it was cool, man. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Dade. So what exactly, because you're sort of, your credit is like Ogre and Dallas Campbell on every track. Yeah. So <laughs> what? how did this work? Like, what is the collaboration going on here? Hmm. Dallas is the guy who suggested this one. Yeah. The secret thing was was his idea. And this, this was my idea, <laughs> or I, 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 my suggestion. I I got a uh, a Farfisa sent the, and I, I was like, dude, we should do a Halloween album. But it, <laughs> I was like, can we at least come up with like you know a few songs or because that it was maybe three weeks ago or, yeah. or so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had like one, a half of a song written. <laughs> we were like, uh, you know, we'll give it a shot, see what we'll see what happens. And I think you pumped out a few. Yeah. Like four four in a night or something. <laughs> yeah. And then you went on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> then I buggered off to Cornwall for like a couple of days and I came back and you'd written like eight tracks. <laughs> and it was amazing. Yeah, and then, and then I think we traded a few back and forth. Yeah. And we and we kind of tracked over each other's maybe you know, like half of them and then and then that was it. We ended up with a bunch of songs somehow. <laughs> and it was really fun. You guys are using different software, right? So, like, does that... Yeah, yeah. I know you're probably just trading stems or whatever, but, I mean, does that mm. create an issue or... No, no problem. Apart from my internet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only... His, his uh, internet like, is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but no, no, know, yeah, we yeah. use, uh, we just sort of work on, you know, we fire stuff back and forth and jam over it. We got in the groove because we did that, we did the other project. Yeah. And it was a lot more work, so we were kind of already knew how to pass stuff back and forth. But at least that secret project was worth it with all the accolades you've received. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> it should no. With any luck, it'll see the light of day in the, like early next year. The secret project, but All Hallows was great fun, and we uh, managed to. I had like this idea for a while that I was kicking around of doing like a sort of multimedia, like you pair an album with a short story or something, and mm -hmm. we discussed it and thought it might work, and then. I had a little bash at writing something. I'm not very good at creative writing, truth be told. Uh, and my lady partner <laughs> saved the day. Mm -hmm. And we got it edited. And it sort of miraculously worked on a track-by-track -track basis. And then we wound up with a cool concept. So it all panned out. Wait, so there's a story for this album? Oh, yeah. You can read it track-by-track. Track, and there's a PDF bundled with the download. Oh, shit. I should look at that. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's really good. Yeah. And I, I only wrote like a little bit of it, really. <laughs> so. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, I thought it was just like cover art. Okay, well, this is news to oh, anybody no. who bought All Hallows. Look at that goddamn PDF. Yeah. <laughs> no, dude, it's it's really good. Yeah, it, it's real cool. That was what inspired me to write like ha the second half of all of my stuff after I read that. Yeah. So this will be a fun game then. I'll ask each of you to pick your favorite track from it. Okay, this might pose a problem <laughs> because... And I understand that you don't want to say your track you wrote is your favorite track. If I had to pick one, it would be... The pr problem is, like, we named the tracks. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to look up what the heck Yeah, exactly. Oh, I we, see, we I named, see. We named, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, we named the tracks pretty hastily because... Because that was my job. <laughs> well, it wasn't your. It wasn't your job. It was. Uh, we were waiting for this story to be like finalized, and then we were going to pick track, like pick names from each paragraph to go along with the track. So, like, if I were to say, like, oh, my favorite track is Dallas Mix Six of this one or whatever, you know, like, I think. But if I were to pick one, it would probably be track number two, which is. Uh, Last Rays of Daylight. The last Rays of Daylight. In fact, I was going to say something Daylight, but I don't want to get it wrong. But that's that's the one. Let's listen to this one, man. This is uh, this is Last Rays of Daylight by Ogre and Dallas Camp off the album All Hallows.
that was Last Rays of Daylight by Ogre and Dallas Campbell, who I'm joined with both of them, and Ogre just said that that's his favorite track. Yeah, I or think so. I, I don't want to put you on the spot. No, it's no, one, I think that year. is my favorite track. That's like the one of the f- first ones Dallas sort of kicked, like, you know, he started that one up, and that chord progression, which is the his Farfisa. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was the chord progression. I was I just recorded it falling around when I got that synth, and I, I was like, oh, man, we should just... That was what gave me the idea. That started everything. That's and I think that's like I've listened to that track God knows how many times in the past few weeks and like it's just really good, you know? Like I don't notice time passing when I listen to that song. Like it's five it's like five <laughs> minutes long and I'll be sat there and I'll be like, Oh man, this is so cool. It's like over and I'll hit the repeat button like straight up. So Dallas did like most of that and then I, I whacked some of the, the stringy sounds over it. Uh, but sort of creep in. It's a cool thing. I was listening to it. I was uh, repainting some robots, <laughs> and uh, th- this this was the soundtrack to some uh, some robot painting. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting though because uh, sorry, I, was just, I just went off on a tangential thought or whatever. But like the uh, I can't remember which bloody track it, the name is now, but it's the one made from the tape loop I sent you. Oh yeah, of terror maybe. Yeah, and that is absolutely awesome. Like track ten is the ch- uh, the tape loop that we were talking about. Yeah, oh, and okay, cool. uh, that, that's a sample of what we were talking about. Yeah, and but like what I wanted to say was like it's just a different way that collaboration might work. You know what I mean? Like Dallas performed that tape loop, but I made the loop itself. So it's sort of it's like it's a different way that you might work on something together that winds up being really cool yeah so like what dallas did with that tape loop is like probably completely different to what i would have done with it but it sounds awesome and i don't know i think it's a great track explain to me briefly as you can like just the actual like i know you say tape loop and i think i understand what you mean but when you say like you made dallas a tape loop so i've got a four track tape recorder and Dallas has a four track tape recorder and his is better than mine <laughs> but what I've done is I will record like four different notes or four different parts to one cassette I will then take that cassette to pieces chop the tape into a 23.5 centimeter length and then splice that back together so when you press play it will play in a continuous loop but you'll still have all four parts that have been recorded to it are sort of fadeable on the uh, tape machine. Now, do you hear where the splice is? No, it's continuous. So it's the same as playing like, well, if I've spliced it right, it's continuous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would be the same as like holding a note down on a keyboard, you know, or a sample. Okay, yeah. I posted those over to Dallas and then he can play those back on his On, four on the four track, they have, they have four sliders. So there, there's going to be an, either a note or a chord per slider. So you can pull those up and down. And they also have a pitch switch and a pitch uh, knob that affects the, t- the speed of the tape. So you got all that to kind of mess with, to like perform, at, or basically. That sounds fun. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, making the loops is pretty hardcore. I've got like fairly big hands, <laughs> so it's pretty fiddly. <laughs> but like... <laughs> Yeah, I could never do that tape loop stuff. My fingers are too fat. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I posted Dallas over a splicing block so he could have a go if he wanted to, but it's pretty fiddly, and I can understand most people wouldn't have time for that. <laughs> you know, yeah. it could take a little while to yeah, 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 to cut and paste it together. But you know, it's pretty cool, and it's the the sort of sounds that you just won't get any other way. You know, how long does it take you to make one? That that must be very time consuming. Well, it takes the time to dub the length of tape. I can probably splice one now in about mm, sort of 10 minutes, ten, between 5 and 10 minutes it would take me to do it because there's a lot of swearing and uh, <laughs> 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 and messing around. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's actually it probably doesn't take as long as, as you'd think, but it's a lot of fun. So I, I love doing that sort of stuff. Dallas, uh, I'm going to throw that question to you now, man. Favorite song? Yeah, favorite uh, song on All Hallows. Ooh, I would probably silhouette. Track number nine. Let's eleven. See. Eleven or nine? Eleven, I think. eleven maybe eleven. Nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, eleven. Yeah. yeah. Ah, 
Well, let's listen to it then. This is a, this is a track called Silhouette of All Hallows. That was Silhouette by Ogre and Dallas Campbell off the album All Hallows. And so, Dallas, you just said that this was your favorite track on the uh, on the album. So what, uh, why? <laughs> 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 because it's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that one's all Ogre. It's just so good. <laughs> <laughs> that main, like, theme, the little kind of sequence... That's in that song is. That's my impression of it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I love that. It's so intense. Uh, and I think that's what's what's cool about this this album is because not knowing how you guys collaborated, I mean, getting a bit more of a sense of it now, is that I really I listened to that whole thing and I never, you know, like you 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 guys were blending together because I, I never really was like listening to a specific track and going like oh this is clearly like an ogre track or whatever like I really felt that the style was consistent through the whole thing cool yeah that's that's really cool to hear actually I do think David's work on the master and really helps smooth things out Klug yeah oh yeah Klug he is, he is for, <laughs> he I is just love to say that guy's name like I know who he is. <laughs> He's for Don, man. Like that is how you say his name too. Clug, yeah, Klug. Yeah. Klug. <laughs> that, he's one of those guys. I remember from uh, hearing your chat with Andy last, Andy last last time actually. That it <laughs> That's was me, Klug. man. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> David did some absolutely amazing, amazing mastering for us, and I felt very lucky. Like. He did a hell of a job, you know? So he, he probably did that pretty quick then, right? Like, how, how what was the timeline of this whole thing? I mean, he, he must have mastered in a day, I would have thought. Dallas, Dallas will probably know more than I did. Yeah, yeah, he was done in, like, a couple of hours, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, that's what that's what super, super, super music people can do, you know? Yeah, we like, luckily, we, had, we know some cool artisty type people that, <laughs> that helped us out <laughs> i mean i think faye did the uh the art in all of 
Well, it probably took like an hour total. She probably did the actual picture in like five minutes. That was just me over her shoulder saying like, oh, the font needs to do this. Or, yeah, the art's great. Move, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. move this a couple of pixels to the left and, and <laughs> stuff. But she, she did a great job. I, I really like it. Yeah, no, no, it looks great. It's very soul bass was the uh, point of reference. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> Hitchcocky. Although in the actual cover art of this thing, it just it's uh, just Robin and Dallas. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, more people know me as Ogre or OGRE, but it's always going to be Robin and Dallas, really, to us anyway. So, isn't that the moral of it all? <laughs> There's a moral to this fable. <laughs> That's going to be it. <laughs> well, guys. I think this has been a, this has been a fun chat. This has been cool. It's the first time you guys have ever uh, spoken, yeah, with each other. Even though doing all this uh, collaboration and uh, lots of great music between the pair of you. Thank you. And uh, uh, thank you. And Robin Ogden does the theme song to Beyond Synth, which is a track called "Sure Thing" off the album Calico Braun. And thanks to Dallas Campbell, who has provided some elements for the intro. I.e. his wife. <laughs> I like uh, her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I forgot to... Since I've started doing the new show, I'm still trying to get back into the groove of all the, like, business. Because I, I do mean to say that stuff at the beginning of every episode, but I think I forgot yeah. to with, like, the first two. That's cool. But uh, everybody knows, everybody asks me the same shit on, like, SoundCloud and stuff. Like, if they're new listeners... Literally, like, the start of every episode, there's always a comment at the beginning, like, like what's this song? <laughs> <laughs> I probably owe you, owe you a commission or something, you know? <laughs> well, at this point. Oh, vice versa, I don't know. <laughs> as long as someone's making some money off of, uh, off of Beyond Synth, because it's sort of a... Any money I spend on Beyond Synth just goes right into the Beyond Synth deficit. Because <laughs> it is a, a money, money losing operation. But did you know? <laughs> did, did you know? You are one of the only, if not the only, synth podcast around. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> well, I'm probably like one of 15 now or something. Like, there's quite a few. I don't think so. No, there's no, there's there's quite a few. But well, uh, we, can, we can pretend mine's the best one. Well, I, I'm going to pretend all yeah. the others are pretenders. <laughs> but anyways man it's been uh, it's been fun talking to you guys this has been like a fun night yeah. all had uh, drinks and pizza respectively yeah. yes it has been a fun night thanks for chatting with me <laughs> I feel yeah, like man. the second you turn your microphone off you're just gonna like fall onto a pillow <laughs> I have to go play Terraria what's that game like which one is that it's the one where you're digging and stabbing <laughs> 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 it's like a 2D, 2D sort of Minecrafty, crafty, crafty game, is it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. But I, I, I don't like the building, I just like the smashing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's always good when you can just have a game that, you know, you can sort of lose yourself and just like mindless. Uh, I do that yeah. with it. That's why I'm excited for, um, did you ever play Just Cause? Oh, I That's saw familiar. a demo of it. Just Cause 2 was on the PlayStation 3, I think it was on the Xbox as well, and it was like, it's like GTA, open world, uh, it takes place in like this sort of tropical kind of... You're on an island, aren't you? Yeah, you're on an island in some fictional like South American country, but the whole game is just blowing stuff up, like that's the point. <laughs> so it's like all the stupid things you do in GTA that you get in trouble for, that's sort of like what this game's about. Anyway, it's awesome, just because it's just like just freeform destruction, and Just Cause 3 is coming out for the PlayStation 4 and mm. uh, it looks like you can do a lot more fun and ridiculous things and it's since it, since the story is so stupid it's just one of those games that you just like just running around doing the the side stuff because it's all pretty basic just blowing stuff up yeah and uh, I like to blow stuff up man you might too <laughs> <laughs> man I need to get a PS4 or something first you need a new fucking computer yeah that's is on what the you list. need that thing t sounds like you got a plane in there yeah <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a lovely evening. And you. Hey, thanks. Nice talking to you guys. Yeah, yeah man, that was cool. <laughs> it's great talking to you guys. All right, yeah. I'll talk to you two later. All right, take care, man. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. And that was my chat with Dallas Campbell and Robin Ogden, a.k.a. Ogre. 
Hope you uh, enjoyed that. Uh, we had a lot of fun, and I enjoyed it too. And that is the end of the show. So I hope you guys are uh, having a lovely day, lovely evening, lovely morning, whenever you're listening to this. If you listen to this at work, on the bus, sitting at your computer, playing video games. I wouldn't recommend playing video games. I feel like my nonsense would be distracting. But uh, that's not for me to say. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we will talk at you next week. That is not the catchphrase of this show. (laughs) I'm trying to come up with a catchphrase. I'll think of one. Anyways, dudes, this has been Beyond Synth on Power85.com at Power85 Radio at Andy Last. And I'll see you at next week.